Hi there, now for something a little obscure. Let's talk about PC sound cards from back in the 80s. So if you had a PC in the 80s, you had a couple choices for sound output. Of course, you could have a Tandy 1000, which has some three voice sound that came originally from the PC Junior. You can see my other video if you want to see that. I'll link it down in the comments below. But most people who had a PC, they were stuck with this. This is a beep speaker. It's a little bit newer than the one that would have been in your old 80s computer, but essentially what this can do is software toggles a register and you get one bit sound. It's just on or off, and if you do it fast enough, you kind of get a square wave and you can produce different tones. You can use one of the timers in the computer to produce the tone so you can kind of do other things while it's making the sound, but it's extremely primitive. So what most people had was one of these. This is an ad lib card. It's made by a company called AdLib out of Canada, and this is a Rev2 card. Basically, what this card has on it is an OPL2 or YM3812 synthesizer chip. That's the chip right here. Originally, this card came out in 1987. You can tell the original version by having a quarter-inch jack, which I do not have. I have the 3.5 millimeter jack, which came in 1990. The card is a nine-channel mono sound FM synthesis card, and this, of course, all comes from this uh, Yamaha sound chip here. All the rest of these chips on here are just off-the-shelf parts. In fact, everything on this card is 100% off-the-shelf. Game support was extensive, and this type of synthesis was carried on into the Sound Blaster line of cards all the way, you know, well into the 90s. If you were playing PC game anytime in the 90s, you were hearing music that was most likely coming from one of these Yamaha chips or a simulation of the chip. Now, at the same time the AdLib was out, there was a competitor card. And this is a picture of it. It's the Creative Music System. I've never actually seen one of these cards, but it was originally released in 1987, and it used Philips SAA1099 chips to produce sound. It had two of them, and these are them right here. That resulted in 12 channels of square wave sound in stereo, so six channels per chip. While the card wasn't that common, a year after this release in 1988, there was a Game Blaster version of this that was sold in Radio Shacks. It was basically exactly the same thing, but as far as I can tell, it was slightly cost-reduced. Unfortunately, the CMS, or Creative Music System, standard didn't live very long, so many people have never heard it, including myself. This brings me to the next card, the one you probably know really well. It's the Creative Lab Sound Blaster. This card was originally released in 1989, and the original version included AdLib compatibility by using the same Yamaha synthesizer chip, which is under this sticker here. This is, brings OPL2 and AdLib compatibility, but it added actual digital audio as well. So these original cards supported 8-bit audio playback at 23 kilohertz in mono, and it could also record 8-bit audio at 12 kilohertz also in mono. Now the earliest 1.0 cards released in 89 carried on with Creative Music System support. These two sockets here were populated on the very early cards, and they included those Philips IC to produce those square waves. The later cards like this, which is considered a Sound Blaster 1.5, omits these chips. But otherwise, this card is exactly the same as the original card. I was given this card by my friend Dave Just Dave. This was his actual card from when he was a kid, and we were both in junior high. It's a little worse for wear. The volume knob is broken off, although you can still turn this shaft to adjust the volume. And the microphone input here is actually blown out because he accidentally put speaker level inputs through the card here. The rest of the card does work perfectly, though, even though it's been kicking around in a box the entire time. So when I got this card and I realized that all I had to do was add the two Philips chips to these sockets to get CMS support, I really figured I had to find those chips and give it a try since I'd never heard this sound system. So I headed over to my favorite place to get parts and sure enough, I was able to find the Philips chips on eBay pretty easily. When I got it, it was actually a little bit cheaper because the entire cost including shipping was a little over $3.50. If you're thinking of doing this upgrade, just keep in mind that it only works on the Sound Blaster 1.5 cards. In fact, if you have two sockets free but all the other chips are populated, then it should work. If your card has three sockets free, just populating these two chips won't be enough. You're going to need the third chip, and it's a little bit more complicated and beyond the topic of this video. But if you look online, there are ways to make it work. But ideally, you need a Sound Blaster 1.5 like this, or of course one of the earlier ones which actually has these chips built in. So here are the two Philips chips that I just got from eBay. They're a little crushed and the pins look a little bent, but there should be nothing that I can't fix. So let's install these into this Sound Blaster card. So this is not exactly ideal that the pins look like this, but hey, when things come from China and they cost almost nothing to ship, you can't always get perfect condition.
All right, so the Phillips chips are installed. The pin straightening was a little bit of a pain in the ass, but otherwise it went right in without too much trouble. And I used some deoxid on the sockets to make sure that there was good contact because this board is pretty old and a little crusty. So let's put this in the 286 and see how it works. All right, so first I wanna see if the sound blaster is still working with ad-lib sound after I just sort of molested it. So let's give Sylphie to try. It's currently configured for ad-lib sound. All right, great. All right, so let's see how it sounds with the CMS now. Okay, to change it over, to use the other one, we have to run the install. And that will allow us to configure the sound card. So we're going to pick EGA Graphics, because that's the best with this game. So we have AdLib Music Synthesizer, but the Creative Music System, a.k.a. the Game Blaster. That's what we're going to pick. And let's run the game. Okay, here we go. How's it sound? We'll hear it in a moment. Here comes this music, if it works. Or it's busted, I don't know, we'll see. The trips might not work, the card might be broken, who knows? Wow. Okay, there's... Okay, so I don't think both channels are working, so probably one of the chips is not seated correctly. Because I don't think we're getting both channels. Let's, uh, I'm gonna reset the seat the chips and see how that goes. Alright, so I'm back and it's now working. As you can hear, we're listening to the CMS sound in Sylphid. And I'd say it's decidedly less good than it is on the AdLib. Now what was wrong before? I was actually only getting one channel of audio. And it turned out that the Sound Blaster board was missing one of the audio output capacitors. So if you see here, I sort of traced back on the board um, and I noticed this capacitor was missing. So I was actually missing the entire right channel. I didn't realize that this was a stereo card. I just assumed it was mono. So I was only getting sound out of left speaker. I just thought that that's how it worked. But the CMS part of the Sound Blaster is actually in stereo, even though nothing else is on this card. And tracing back the other channel, uh, the left channel, I found that a uh, capacitor was missing, so I just looked in my parts bin, I found the exact same capacitor, and I installed it into the missing spot, and now we have full stereo audio, and as you can hear, the CMS audio is working. What's strange is there's no music during the game, and I saw some YouTube videos of this game um, with CMS sound, and it does have music here. So... There's just the PC speaker. So I'm not sure what's going on here, but I assume it's just my copy is, is screwed up or something. But obviously the intro music is working. Let's listen to a few other things through the CMS chips here. And here we have Police Quest 3. Running through the CMS. Yeah. I mean, the sound is basically like what you'd get out of, say, a Nintendo or, a, you know, one of the early 8-bit computers like the C64, SID, although that had some different style waveforms in this. Ooh, this doesn't seem to be running very well either. All that weird glitching. But, um, yeah, there's more channels here. I think this, what I say, this has uh, 11 channels or 12 channels. That's right, it's 12, six on each chip. So it's actually a little more capable when it comes to square wave audio. So it's not bad sounding. Kind of has a bit more of that chip tune feel to it. But the ad lib just has a little bit more varied sound to it. Obviously more distinctive. All right, now we're running it with ad lib mode. Well, it's actually running in the sound blaster mode. So maybe there's some digital sound, but mostly FM synthesis through the ad lib. Well, there's a bit more percussion, because, of course, the ad can do drums a little bit better. A 
I don't know. There's something special about that square wave sound, which is kind of cool. The the FM synthesis chip just can't do a square wave properly. And the bass line is always horrible on the ad lib. It just sounds all warbly and strange. I don't know. I can't tell which I like better. I, I kind of like the kind of digitally 8-bit chip sound on the other the CMS chips. Alright, so this game here is The Secret of Monkey Island, and it just has a fantastic soundtrack. Of course, here we're listening to the ad-lib version of it. There's no Sound Blaster support on this. Let's just listen in. It's kind of like a little bit of a calypso sound out of the amp synthesis. Plus, we have a little bit of drum action going on. Beautiful VGA artwork. This is a very early VGA game, 1990. Great graphics. Great game. The Adlet would have been a huge upgrade from the horrible PC speaker sound that you get on a on a regular PC. So this sounds pretty good. Let's uh, let's try the CMS now. All right, now we're on the CMS. Very different on the intro here. Yeah, this just sounds very nice as well. It's actually getting a little bit of good bass line in here. And the stereo effect, which you're not hearing on the video, is really nice. I'm hearing it standing here. Lots of polyphony going on right now. Ah, yeah, this sounds really great. This is such a great... The soundtrack on this game is just fantastic. There you go. My newly repaired Soundmaster 1.5 with the Creative CMS chips added is definitely going to find a permanent home inside my 286 here. I just love this card actually. It sort of brings the best of everything. I got AdLib, Sound Blaster, and Game Blaster slash CMS compatibility all in one card. This is just perfect. And uh, I kind of like the sound of those old Square Wave tunes. And for games that support AdLib and CMS, which I think Though I don't think there's any games that only support CMS, but I might often actually just pick CMS as the choice of sound while I'm playing. Anyhow, if you found any of this interesting, uh, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. You can subscribe for more videos, and uh, you can definitely ask questions down in the comment section below. I appreciate you watching. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah, a little addendum here. You may have noticed during the video that this power supply, which is a King's Pow, like a Kung Pow chicken power supply, they're darn loud. Computers were just loud in the old days. These fans, they just they just run really fast and just make a ton of noise. So definitely my next uh, thing to do on this case is to take it apart and install this Arctic fluid dynamic bearing quiet fan into here. That should help.
um, because this thing is way too noisy for use. It doesn't make it very enjoyable when I hear this constant whooshing sound. Yeah, okay, bye.